Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I have a reflection for your edification that I've prepared. I'm entitling Bad Confessions. <laughs> mm. Don't forget our conference, our Sacred Arts Conference starts today. You can still sign up for the live streaming or come in person. Bad Confessions. What is a bad confession? First of all, you should know there is such a thing as a bad confession. And there are also good confessions. Those are two poles. And every confession we make is somewhere on that uh, continuum. What are the elements that make a bad confession? Well, first of all, uh, a bad confession is no confession or a confession that's kind of a limping confession that you make at home privately in your own closet or kind of half uh, articulate to God. That's a bad confession. A bad confession is one that isn't done the way that the Lord has asked us to make confession, which is with an examination, a sincere, sincere and serious examination of our conscience, of our heart, of our actions, and then the confession of those things to his priests, to our father confessor, to our spiritual father. Anything short of that this is a bad confession. No confession is a bad confession. Confession that isn't done publicly to your priest, bad confession. Another uh, idea of a bad confession is, is not uh, that it confess that the person confesses something terrible or ho a horror. No, the most serious of sins, if confessed properly with humility, with a sincere repentance, hopefully with tears, is a magnificent confession. But bad confessions are no preparation, not done the right way, or just not uh, confessing with humility and honestly. For instance, a bad confession is when someone comes and confesses someone else's sins. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time, oh. When we go to confession, if we've done something in response to an offense, someone has hurt us or offended us, and then we responded poorly, and we need to confess that. Do not confess the other person's sin. Do not expose someone's nakedness when you're trying to humble yourself before God. That will steal all the grace of your repentance and will make the issue, of course, about the person who offended you. Instead, focus on what you did. Don't confess someone else's sins. Plenty of times over the years I've been hearing a confession, so-called confession, but it was really the person, the confessee, telling me about what somebody else did to them. And when they finished, I just patted them, took my stole off their head, patted them on the back and said, well, you have a nice day. If you see that person, tell them that I'm waiting here at the confessional for them. And they're like, what? I'm like, well, clearly you came to confess someone else's sin for them and not your own because you spent the whole time telling me how bad this person was to you. So just tell them I'm waiting for them and that will take care of it when they come. <laughs> Usually they get the message. That is not how we confess uh, is exposing somebody else's nakedness. Another bad confession practice is to begin your confession with your father confessor by praising yourself. Now, usually this is done because the confessee doesn't want the priest to think poorly of him or her. So he first and start, starts out by saying, well, you know, Father, generally it's been a pretty good month. I've done, been doing really good since my last confession. Any talk like that is also robbery. You're robbing yourself of compunction. You can't bring yourself before the confessional with compunction and humility if you start by praising yourself. That is a bad confession. Don't praise yourself at all. Uh, another mistake is playing father confessor yourself and telling the priest what is really bad on your list and what isn't. Well, the worst thing I did, Father, is this. My counsel to you, dear ones, is let your spiritual father tell you what the worst sin is. Don't play spiritual father. Don't present yourself like the great evaluator of the seriousness of your sins. It is common, I think, that we often think 
that that which is serious is not so serious in the father confessor's minds, and that which we think is not so serious is more serious in the father's con father confessor's mind. The man who is called by God to hear confession, to be a spiritual physician, who has experience with people, is going to be able to help you understand and discern what is very serious, what is not very serious. Don't play that role yourself. Don't evaluate. Another bad idea is to leave that sin which you're most embarrassed about till the end. And then it just kind of poisons everything else because your mind is not on what you're confessing beforehand. Your mind is on the embarrassing thing which you're going to get to, but it steals your compunction for the previous sins. Instead, turn that bad confession into a good confession by mentioning the most embarrassing thing first. Be raw, be honest, don't smooth it over. Just tell your spiritual father what you did, what's bothering you the most, and just lay it out there. Puke it out and don't try to make a, a pig have a bow right on, the, on its snout. There's no making our sins pretty. Just begin with the worst. And let the priest evaluate it. We don't go to our medical doctors and what, let them do a full scan of us. And then we tell them what's serious and what's not. No, we listen about what's serious. They know that if this cholesterol level remains at this, you're going to have a heart attack. Maybe you don't know that. They know that. And so they tell you, you know what? I know your arthritis in your right ankle is killing you. But what you really need to be concerned about is your cholesterol level. Now you need to change your diet. You need to start exercising. The, the doctor is going to tell you that. And it works the same way in spiritual medicine. Listen to the physician. Let him evaluate you. Let him help you judge what is serious and what is not. Don't play father confessor. Also, avoid verbosity. Being loquacious, using so many words uh, as a cover from the sin, saying so much background because it hurts so much just to jump right in and say, this is what I did. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I did this. Watch out for using verbosity as a cover or being too general or too specific, all as ways not to get to the what pains you most. Be careful also with allowing your nervousness. Sometimes when we're nervous, we giggle and we laugh, but it's highly inappropriate in confession when you should be weeping to giggle or laugh. Calm yourself, make your cross, ask God's blessing uh, on your preparation and on your presentation of repentance uh, and avoid laughing and giggling. Uh, and lastly, don't confuse going to confession with anything else. It's not a time to ask prayer requests of the priest. It's not a time for pastoral counseling. Pastoral counseling is a thing. If you need pastoral counseling, make an appointment for pastoral counseling. But don't steal your confession. Don't steal the grace and drive it away by confusing what you're doing with something else. It's not a time to ask theological questions, to turn in your prayer lift. That's, that's not what this is. Instead, it's a every confession is an encounter with God, a catastrophic encounter with God in which we're bringing to him uh, death that lies in us, that we need him graciously to eliminate. If you avoid these things, dear ones, you have the possibility of making a good confession that will both bring forgiveness and also grace for amendment of life and tremendous consolation because God gives grace to the humble and he forgives the sins of those who are sincere in repentance. Let me end with a few beautiful words from St. John of Sinai in the latter about how to confess. He says, you cannot escape shame except by shame. Shackle your shame. Don't run from it. Shackle it and use it to confess well. It is often the habit of the demons to persuade us either not to confess or to do so as if we were confessing another person's sins, or to lay the blame for on our sin on others. Lay bare 
lay bare your wound to the physician and without being ashamed, say, it is my wound, Father. It is my plague caused by my own negligence and not by anything else. No one is to blame for this. No man, no spirit, nobody, nothing but my own carelessness. At confession, be like a condemned criminal in disposition and in outward appearance and in thought. Cast your eyes to the earth and if possible, sprinkle the feet of your judge and physician as the feet of Christ with your own tears. St. John of Sinai, the ladder of divine ascent. May God spare us bad confessions and may he guide us in making good grace-filled confessions that secure forgiveness and bring great joy. God be with you, dear ones. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to announce a new conference entitled The Sacred Arts, Preaching the Gospel Without Words, with lectures given by Father Maximus Konstas and Jonathan Pajot. From Friday, March 29th to Sunday, March 31st, conference topics will include The Origin of Sacred Art, How Iconography Preaches the Gospel, How to Read an Icon, How Architecture Preaches the Gospel, how music preaches the gospel, and a sermon by Father Maximus. We hope you will join us for opportunities to pray, meet our speakers, attend a young adult social hour, and network with like-minded individuals. A $60 registration fee includes an in-person seat, access to a live stream which can be viewed from anywhere, and the conference recordings. To register and find more information, please visit conference.com patristicnectar.org